Welcome to Kundalini Yoga. I am happy to be here with you and my name is Karuna and um, light on Kundalini rocks, rocks the world and, and let's get into the healing of grief. It's, a, it's an incredible workshop we're going to do, so stick with it. We're going to go systematically through the body. We're going to tune in first with Om Namo, Guru Dev Namo. Bring the hands together at the heart. It's a mantra to reach your higher frequency. Inhale to tune in. Om Namo, Guru Dev Namo. Exhale, bring your legs forward, and we're going to go straight into this 18 point part series. You're going to start tapping the tops of your thighs, which have a meridian, a kidney meridian. And let's read about what's happening here as we tap our thighs. You continue to tap, and let me teach you a little bit about why you're doing this because it's stimulating where the third meridian, the liver and the kidney meet. It's 90 seconds. So we'll time it perfectly for you. And you can just keep the legs straight even though the knees want to jump because they know they're being activated. And you just tap. This Kriya is going to systematically move you from asana to asana, posture to posture. We're going right in. No need to um, hesitate. <laughs> and you can do this Kriya every day. This can be your get up and get going Kriya. And this is called getting the body out of distress. So inhale, hold. Exhale, bring your fingers on the tops of your kneecaps around them. Don't press the top of the kneecap, so move around the kneecaps. And this is very, very important to understand when there's too much water in the body. It usually locates itself around these kneecaps. So, Getting the body out of distress is putting a little bit of pressure around the kneecap and moving this water. This water, if there's too much in the body, can make you itchy, grumpy, and that sort of thing. And too less can make you really nervous and unwilling to cooperate and stagnant. And you know as your knees start hurting, the whole body starts hurting. So let's read the wisdom. You keep moving around the knees and we're going to read the wisdom about what it is said here. It's underneath the kneecap regulates and sustains your body's water. Too much water in the system can create headaches. Too little, too little water is bitchiness and itchiness. So without reason, you, too little is bitchiness and itchiness and too much is headaches. So go the other way. Your knee has an important effect on your well-being and the majority of us walk incorrectly and the knees take tremendous stress. I want to talk about that a little bit as you're moving this water around these knees and go in your circular directions. Walking on the feet. Hmm. Incorrectly, we say don't walk on the heels, walk on the metatarsals, the pads of the feet. Mindfully walk, place an awareness around each step of the way that you go. Okay, great job. And he wants us back here. 
and we're going to affect that meridian again, that kidney meridian. It's the third meridian. It's located in the thighs. So tap, 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 tap. Keep up. You'll be kept up. And you want to come down to the fibula right here where that bone protrudes. Make fists and tap. Step three. Tap, 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 tap. Let's read the wisdom about the calf pound. So, this is generally an energy point in acupuncture, stimulating it can totally change your metabolism. Pound harder and heavier for the second minute. So he wants you here two minutes and pounding. Please, please, pound that meridian point. Pound just the outside. I know you want to go inside, but we'll get there. We're going to get there. Vigorously pound the muscle at the point of each side of the fibula bone, where it protrudes. That's just where you stay. Get going. Pound, pound, pound. And inhale and exhale back to the knees. Move the water. This is a science, right? This is what we're doing. Move that water. It's not for long, it's 15 seconds, okay? Very, very good. Let's go back to the inner thigh. So open up your legs just about a 60 degree angle, pounding the inner part of the thigh. Pounding the inner part of the thigh. Let's read about it. This is a sex point. It may hurt in some cases, it will let you know that there is something in your spine, in your shoulders, and in your head. So chin in and let's pound. Two minutes. Breathe and pound. When he says it's a sex point, there's locations around the body that activate the second chakra around the sexual organs and we want to keep those healthy happy holy so we're polite and we don't react we act consciously within and around ourselves and each other this will stimulate that point and keep you very earthed and grounded in harmony with your sexuality with your partner, with yourself. Balance right and left hemisphere. Brain, stay balanced. That's what we're doing. Getting the body out of distress. Good job. So let's go onward into, let's see. He wants our legs way apart. So open and find the balance. So when you have pounded, you might feel right left side a little bit more out of balance. So find the balance. I love to bend the right knee and the left knee. Flex the foot, find the balance, spread the legs wide apart, grab the outsides of the ankles, holding the Achilles tendons. So grab whatever you can. Some of you might not be able to get down there. So just stay up and grab whatever you can. If you can get here, inhale and exhale. Get this body out of distress, please. Why? Because we'll poke, provoke, and confront all the places we hold our grief. So this was the first Kriya I chose for the grief workshop to get you out of distress. We have to move the body. You can't read this in a book. You have to get up and get going. So inhale, exhale. And you keep up, and I'll read to you what this is doing for you. 
You can go to the left, you can go to the right. It's balancing the flow of energy in the spine. Move with the rhythm as fast as you can and alternate your position. So let's move like a propeller. It's gonna go inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So left, right, center, left, center, right, center, and continue. And just go. Just go, move, one minute. It's activating your life nerve from your groin. Doesn't matter, just keep up. Just keep up. Get intoxicated with your breath. You'll feel this. Try not to be a perfect, perfect, perfect yogini. Yogi, just move for gosh sakes. Move, there you go. If you've been doing kundalini yoga for a very long time, you understand that the method works. If it's your first class, you'll understand through other practices you might have, this is a great addition. This is a great addition in the way of it activates right and left hemisphere of the brain. It balances you, this kriya. And there's 4,000 kriyas. So this is specific for grief to move the body out of grief. Parts of you are holding your grief in different areas. So inhale, exhale, and receive and release. And let's move to the kundalini spiral. So that's very important to understand why we move to this seventh phase of this practice. Sit in easy pose. Fold your hands into a teepee and you're touching all the fingers, your tattvas. So very, very important to understand why you're doing this. Now, you press those fingers together. This is Jupiter, my index. This is middle finger, Saturn. This is ring finger, Sun. And this is pinky communication. And my thumb is my id. I move this spiral inward and out, and I'm opening and closing, and I'm shutting my eyes down, and I'm inhaling and I'm exhaling, and I'm balancing the hemispheres of my brain. By using earth, wind, fire, water, ether, these tattvas, these fingers are referenced as tattvas. Many times you'll see people lecturing and they'll just automatically put their hands and their fingers together because it gives balance in communication because your pinky is your communicative finger your index finger is Jupiter for expansion it witnesses you knowledge wisdom and grace the middle finger is Saturn the Saturn is about forgiveness and patience. We'll work with Saturn and a Kriya down the path of this here workshop. <laughs> and then the sun is your beautiful ring finger, which brings vitality, stamina, and your id is your thumbs, which bring you back home to your spirit and not let your ego run your life, but run your spirit. And ego comes second, spirit first, ego second, spiral. And the spiral is inhale, exhale, and you're just molding your witness right here. And you keep up and you'll be kept up in this works with the previous exercises and it will benefit the and send energy and equally to 72,000 nerve endings, channels, energy, kundalini energy, spiral force, diagonal force. It can be moved in every part of the body just by doing this movement. So the kundalini energy, the spiral force, the diagonal force, the 72,000 nerve channels are moving as you're stimulating the energy just by moving the spiral, inhaling and exhaling. All that is working from only this. Can you imagine that? 
So science, technology, studying, being a good student, keeping up with every part of this practice, every step. Never take this practice out of sequence. Always keep up. Very, very important for you to understand this. Okay, now we're gonna do some hip rises and raising the hips is very essential to how we move the kundalini energy. So you're gonna lie down on your back, your arms are on the side, beside the body, the palms are down and you rapidly raise and lower your hips and you bounce your hips even before I get there, you're already there galloping. So let's go. Very, very essential to move the energy and continue to move this energy. So inhale, exhale, hips rise, hips fall, go like galloping horses. Why does the energy get sent around you? Because the kundalini is at the kunda, the coil at your tailbone. Lift and lower. The heels are down, the shoulders are down, it's just your hips. The knees aren't even bent. And inhale and exhale. Secrete, don't move, breathe. Good work. Moving from hip raises that are two minutes to a one minute shoulder pound. You're still lying on your back. You make your hands into fists. You bend your elbows and you hit your shoulders with the fist. And then you raise your arms back up to 90 degrees. So it's here and you boom and open your hands. And you boom and open your hands. So make fists, boom, hit your shoulders, open your hands 90 degrees. Elbows straight, arms right at parallel. 90 degrees, don't switch anything up. Just do as it's asked you to do. It's easier, by the way. You don't have to think, just do what you're asked to do. Hit your shoulders, pound them, pound them, open up, offer. Make everything devotional. We're just breaking down the stress in the body where it gets all caved in. That's only one minute and inhale up and hold. Exhale, turn the palms up and secrete. Don't move the body. When we secrete, we delete in stillness. Moving from the shoulder pound one minute to the chest slap. Sounds brutal, but it's not. It's just alternately hitting the chest with open palms. Only one minute. Play your drums. It's your chest above your breast. And there are spirit points right below your collarbone, chin in and up. Only one minute. If you don't have a timer, just count to 60, 1,001, 1,002, like that. Keep going, you're doing awesome. And now moving on to the alternative, alternately tap the forehead and with these open palms, boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 frontal lobe, chin in. Very easy. Why does everything have to be so difficult, right? Doesn't. Stick with us. Open your palms. It's not your fingertips, it's your palms. Do as instructed, alternate. We think we know more, but if we just follow along, we'll learn. 
Good job. Keep up. That's only one minute. Actually, it's only 30 seconds. Good job. Inhale, exhale, and spinal rolls, which I love so much. So, lying down on your back. Relax. Breathe. And let's get you organized. Here's how I want you to do these spinal rolls. They're really fun. Bring your hands on the inside, grab, grab, and go back. Grab your heels and come up and look at that balance, eh? And inhale, exhale. And go about 30 times. That's three, that's four, that's five. And you keep up, six, seven, eight, like a kid in a sandbox, nine. You can enjoy this, by the way. You can have any of your favorite music on. It's best to listen to your breath, though, because we're in workshop mode, and we don't want any distractions. There's already enough in our heads. All right, and exhale, come up. Excellent work, spinal rows. And now we get to go into snake hips. So come lying on your back and move like a snake. The hips move in one direction while the shoulders and the rib cage move in another. Move in small movements but with force, bottom to the top, give the spinal energy its own chance to move and give the vertebra an adjustment. And here's how it looks. Just like this, so good, right? Ooh. So right shoulder down, left hip up, nothing, no breaking the knee. Right hip up, left shoulder down. He said small, adjustments, small movements. You will find such balance in this Kriya. A Kriya is a set of asana. They're not all 18 postures. It's just the one I choose. It's that inner coach that wants to get you there in the fast lane. I want to get all this virus residue out of you so you can be healthy. We all have virus. It's not the pandemic only. It's any virus residue. You might have had virus before this pandemic just sitting in the residue of you. We can't get to it with antibiotics. We have got to get to it with breath and practice, commitment and devotion. Good diet, long baths. Okay, good job. You're doing great. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. We got to rest now. So lie on your back and rest. Wahe gudu. It's only 90 second rest. Breathe slowly and deeply at the navel point. Enjoy your rest. 90 seconds. Turn your palms up. Kick off your covers if you covered yourself and bring your right knee into your chest for a cat stretch. Chin in, shoulder blades down, pull. Bring your left foot, flex it, and get the back of the knee down, pull. 
and then release slightly so the psoas secretes and tuck the right toes behind the left knee. Right knee over the left hip, right arm stretches away. You look to the right fingertips if your neck permits. If not, just do what you can do and really squeeze this out. This is the back lobes of the lungs where we keep residue of viruses that take so much more than an antibiotic can get out of you. You know that. Inhale and exhale. Come back to center. Pull the knee in. Chin in. Release the leg down. Let the psoas secrete. Inhale, left knee into the chest, cat stretch, other side, chin in, dog barks. Left foot behind the right knee, rotate right knee over left hip, left arm out, look out towards the left fingertips, turn the palm down if your shoulder permits, and breathe into the back lobes of the lungs and inhale. And exhale, let go, inhale. And exhale, twist more, secrete. And inhale, come back to the center. Pull the knee in, stretch the right knee down, flex the right foot and exhale down. Turn your palms up and secrete and breathe. Inhale, the heart to the lower chakra, belly rises, inhale, and belly falls, exhale, bring your palms down, shoulders are down, lift your head, point your toes, and exhale down, and inhale, lift, it's called neck stretch, keep your shoulder blades on the mat, exhale down, inhale up, Exhale down. Oh, it gives you such a breath. Inhale up. Wahi Guru. Exhale down. Inhale up. Wahi Guru. Exhale down. Whatever I'm holding on to, Mary, please let it go. One last time. Inhale up. Hold. Squeeze. Point your toes, flex your feet, point your toes, flex your feet, point your toes, flex your feet, and release. Turn your palms up and secrete. Open your mouth. Let everything dissolve. Stay there. Secrete, secrete, secrete. Rest, delete, rest. Two minutes, rest. You can cover yourself. Without 
without the grief, you wouldn't have come. Dear brothers and sisters, take a deep inhale, please. And exhale, place your hands, oh, keep your eyes down and shut. Place your hands over your face. Keep your eyes shut and just start to give yourself, use the pads of your palms and massage your cheekbones. Move your fingers and your toes and give yourself a beautiful face massage. And then palms over the head, I mean over the face, and slowly, slowly open your eyes into the darkness. And try to come out of bed every morning the same way so there's no hard light that you awaken to or loud sounds or alarms or anything. Always remember to try to do a cat stretch that you did earlier. And always remember to put your hands over your eyelids before you wake up and then open your eyes in the darkness and that'll slowly adjust your eyes and then you slowly, slowly bring in the light. And bring your hands over your heart and rub your palms. Bring the bottoms of your feet up, rub, rub, rub if you're lying on your back. Pull your knees into your chest and roll up and down on your sacred spine. And come to a seated position. And close your eyes and bring your left hand in your cupped into the navel point and your right hand over your left and bring the tips of your thumbs together. And in this incredible yogic way, this beautiful you. Feel the body out of distress. Feel the humbleness and the glow of the teachings of Kundalini Yoga and meditation. These ancient wisdoms of grace, tolerance, patience, knowledge, wisdom compassion, love, 
devotion, willingness to let go, willingness to grow up, wake up, show up, clean up, lift up your spirits, uplift others, be the forklift. But today, for you, dear friends, willingness to go into these layers and layers and layers of grief that we'll bring to the surface. And we'll finally say goodbye to them and we'll also thank them for it was them that brought us here today. Continue on to the next part of this workshop. Hydrate in between each part of this workshop. Have your journal nearby so you can write asking yourself these multiple questions of why I'm here. Answer them. What I'm asking to let go of Am I willing to change in this challenging time I'm sitting in right now? And how do I see myself right now in my present state of being? Please journal. Please take time to make your own food, grow your own vegetables, and enjoy each other. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. Guide your way on, guide your way on. Please inhale. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. May the blessings of this day open you up in a sacred new way, telling your sacred stories in the sacred you of you. Sat Nam. A long, long rest will be needed after you complete this workshop. And this is forever going on, it's evergreen. So enjoy, my dear friends. I have so enjoy this practice. From the bottom of my heart, I thank you for tuning in and staying tuned in. Sat Nam. You can contact me at Light on Kundalini, Karuna at Light on Kundalini, asking me any questions that are relevant to grief and kundalini yoga. I'm happy to answer best I can. I'm always, always humbled by your presence. Thank you so much. Satnam.